one of the subjects that we haven't really talked about much is uh, so now you've got these darn things. You know, we talked about who might be interested, and that's going to be a guy like me who's a bit of a hobbyist but has a reason to use saws, you know, an enthusiast. But what can you do to make them run better? Well, there's two or three areas that I think will uh, uh, prove to be um, areas to spend time that can make a difference. One is just simply the muffler. I love the way Farmer Tech and Huzzle do these things. I mean, they're really, really simple to work with. And basically, uh, the baffle right here can be modified. And what they've done is they've made it where the exhaust runs into this plate and then has to disperse through these holes here. So there's a variety of different strategies, but it's pretty easy to work with. You know, and then of course the outlet size is actually pretty good size right the way it is. So there's a couple of things we can do with a muffler. You know, I'm going to try to keep things simple. And on the intake side, if you look at these, these uh, cylinders as sent, um, they actually have quite large transfers on the 54 millimeter. Um, and interestingly enough, the big bores will make more power, so that's an easy update right there for 50 bucks. But they also have even larger transfer uh, tracks or tunnels on the inside, even though where they have them entering into the uh, cylinder is not quite as large. I don't know if you can see that. Flip it around so they're symmetric. Um, so, and also on the intake side, sometimes they're a little bit uh, goofy right where it intersects the cylinder. And there's some flashing right there. So, along with what I was saying before about the quality of these parts, um, they're pretty good, but they will require some detail work. Well, while you're in there breaking edges and doing a little bit of the detail work on these forty fifty dollar top ends why not make that intake symmetric and widen it possibly a little bit but certainly break the edges and there's usually a little ridge right on the inside here and I'm not sure why it's just the way the casting is I've seen it on, on a lot of them this one has it as well this one has that same issue so uh, I'm going to take this cylinder right here go out to the garage and spend some time with a die grinder on it. I'm not going to attempt to change any of the timing, but what I will do is focus on that intake side, breaking the edges and breaking the edge on the inside here and also making that symmetric. I'm not going to lower that and change the uh, port timing. That's not the plan here. Um, it may get incidentally wider just because that's what I need to do to clean it up. So on this build, what we're going to do, this one here is as everything came right out of the box, no changes. On this build right here, I'm just going to do a mild cleanup on the ports. Just going to clean them up. Not going to change the timing, just going to make them a little cleaner. And then what we'll be able to do is run this saw when I got it put together side by side with a as it comes out of the box saw, and you'll be able to see a, a difference if there is any. If there's no difference, well, then it's a waste of time, isn't it? But that's why we do these things. But that's also why this series of saw from FarmerTech you can buy through Hudzel and Leo Your Parts and a bunch of other places on eBay are um, really fun to work with because you can, for a low cost, can make these kinds of, of changes and you can uh, do these kinds of experiments if you want to. And that's the kind of thing a hobbyist wants to do. Perfect for the hobbyist. Yet when you're done you have a functioning saw. It's, it's a worthwhile saw. Again, this is going to be uh, a tools from Lowe's style of a, of a deal. And no, I'm not going to put the degree wheel on it and all that stuff. I'm going to do a lot of this by eye. I'm not going to measure and mark my cylinder as if I'm doing a, a real port job. This is just a cleanup of a cylinder I'd gotten through Hudsel. And I can see there are some um, irregularities on the intake. And I just want to spend a couple of minutes trying to break edges and get rid of that little ridge that's on the beginning 
or in the bottom of the intake port. So not going to put a lot of time into it. Really not going to touch much. You know, make sure you check with the piston to make sure your aspirations of going wider aren't going to go wider than that skirt. You know, um, it's a good idea to measure and mark where that skirt is so you have a visual in your cylinder. Um, but I have no aspirations at all of widening these things, so I'm just going to do it by eye. And really, I'm just trying to straighten out that uh, irregularity in there and break edges more than anything else. You really don't need much of a die grinder, but what you do need is you need a good carbide um, bit. You're not going to get away with, you know, woodworking stuff or this is this is not going to work. You got to have a good a good carbide. The other thing is, before you start doing your cuts, kind of dry run it before you actually do any cutting at all. You don't want to run too high in RPM. Um, you really don't want to uh, load that bit up. Don't try to do it all in one cut. You know, it's like painting a picture. Thing I've learned in his his stuff, you can move a lot of material in a hurry. So you really, really, really don't want to put a lot of pressure on it. While I was at it, I broke the edges around here too. So, go put it back on. So I spent a little more time with with the sandpaper to make sure those edges were thoroughly broken. Nothing that a finger and a piece of fan, sandpaper can't do. Don't need a fancy die grinder. So uh, I guess we're just gonna give it a good shot of air and wipe out the inside as best it can. And we'll put this cylinder on and see what we got as compared to one that just comes out of the box. And remember, I'm going to do a muffler mod too. Well, geez, maybe I should go do that. Hang on. Die grinders are wonderful things. Probably good enough. So there's quite a bit less resistance. Now I'll take a hand file and get the rest of that out of there. So and I'm hoping there's enough here that won't break loose. So we'll see if it makes any difference at all. Now this is going to get as, about as random as it's going to get, is I'm just going to open up that hole to sort of match the, uh, the shield. <laughs>
Okay, back from the shop. And the game here is to see whether or not this build with these two parts that have been slightly modified with tools you can get from pretty much any place like Lowe's and Harbor Freight. How is it going to run as compared to this saw, which was built with those same um, brand parts right out of the box? And the two things I want to discuss is yet again a derivative of my uh, the aftermarket part series where my point is it's, it's the cost of these parts make these kinds of experiments low enough risk where a hobbyist can do that kind of thing and have fun. If it doesn't work so what you throw it out and do something else and buy another cylinder or buy another muffler. And it gives you a lot of latitude to try things. We're going to start with simple, but we can get a whole lot more com complex and plan to over time. Um, the guy who's a professional and he wants to go out and just pull the string and have it cut, he's not interested in this stuff. That's not, that's not who's going to be interested in these saws. Okay. So I guess what I'm going to do now is, uh, since I'd already put this cylinder on once, I'm going to pull the piston, take the gasket out, and put a fresh gasket in there. I don't want to reuse that gasket and then just reassemble the saw with a base gasket with um, the tweaked muffler and the tweaked cylinder which is not again it's just very simple stuff um, get it running and then we can go test one against the other we'll just swap bars at some point in time uh, hopefully when it's not raining the sun just came out so it may happen today but probably tomorrow I think the big question is do I want to have one or two videos I guess another tech tip is to uh, make sure you remember to put your base gasket on before you uh, put your piston on because the gasket will not fit over the top of the piston. Second thing is this, is there is that raised area that goes to the cylinder side, not to the case side. That guy goes right in there. Now I, I uh, pulled this one out because I would already crimped it and it looked like it had been doing its job quite well. I kind of like these things, these metal gaskets. And I basically just slide that back. I put the, uh, the wrist pin clip in first on the side that I'm going to push to and then uh, get the second one in on obviously on the other side. You know, a lot of people go into all kinds of uh, mental gymnastics about what brand they like to work on and so on and so forth. You know, this series of saw, they're real easy. I mean, they really are. I don't care how you look at it, they're very easy and very pleasant to work on. that back and forth and make sure those rings are captured by those little pins. Sometimes this is not quite as straightforward as you want because you see that big chamfer base of that cylinder. That means it lets the piston rings kind of come out before you want at times. Let's see if I can get it the first time. The other thing you kind of have to do on these and trust me when I tell you, before you put it all the way down, drop those little screws in. You got to put it in from the clutch side like that. That's the only way it's going in. The other thing that does is it helps line the gasket up. Now, another thing I do, and I'm not sure it makes a hill of beans a difference, but I do it anyway. Is once I get those started, I just, you know, get it through the gasket where I can see things. And I'll get these, uh, these uh, cylinder screws just started. That's all I want. I take it and I rotate it all the way down to bottom dead center. So that I know that piston is as far down in there as I can. Okay? It's right down to the bottom. Then I take the screws bring them down and go through a tightening sequence. The reason I do that is because these uh, steel cylinders, they don't have a flange 
like the Husqvarna does. So what aligns the gasket and aligns the cylinder to the piston is, in fact, the piston and the screws. And I think with the piston down that bottom dead center, the skirt is um, as far into the uh, gasket case system as it can possibly be. So I do that. I don't know if it makes any difference. And once I get it down in there, then I go through that tightening sequence that you've seen me do a hundred times. Just a little at a time. Cross pattern. Change it up a little bit. Okay. Turn this through and make sure everything's happy. And it is. Boy, that does look better. Huh. So the muffler screws, you're going to have the two short ones for up on top. But then you have the four, two that go into the cylinder first, and then two little bit larger ones that go into the case. So there's the muffler and the cylinder. The muffler is slightly modified. The cylinder just cleaned up the intake port and beveled the other ports. Notice this grommet right here. That's one of the mystery pieces of uh, plastic that you find, and that's there for the uh, ignition wires to go through. Moving right along. Well, I don't know. This may fall into the category of keep it simple, stupid. I don't know. What I did was... Uh, Yeah, put a little lube on that. But on this one right, this one right here, I took this wire and I brought it into the shop and took some 400 grit paper and just smoothed out where that wire connects up to the uh, that that uh, that post right there. And That's all I really did. I put a little lube in there because it looks to me like this little disc right there is an abrasive. So it doesn't matter if there's lube or not because it's like a little piece of sandpaper. It must be by design. But much happier. You know, I think I'm going to lube the whole damn thing. Well, I'm already into the final phases of this saw. And interestingly enough, I'm still editing the video that this is going to be a part of. I would take those steel cage bearings that you can buy from Hudsel over those nylon cage bearings that Husqvarna... Ah, that was me pontificating on my poor Husqvarna XT, which is a problem. And the last piece of the puzzle for this saw before we actually go bring it out to the woods and test it is, is putting on the... Uh, the chain adjuster and I don't know if I've ever videoed that before but while I'm here I got these online and these are supposedly OEMs and they cost me about fifteen dollars a piece uh, eBay seller they actually have steel pressed into them so it looks to me like that they're in fact the real deal and then I've got these and then these are the ones that come from from the the, the aftermarket. So that these are the ones I'm putting on mine. I don't know if I bring it up close if you can see. Those are the ones that are going on on my builds. I like them a lot better. So there it is. This will be the MM660 mildly modded. And the muffler was modded as you saw. The cylinder was cleaned up as you saw. And to repeat the issues I've had with this series of saws is the pull start clearance issues, um, the chain adjuster, and those those drums. I'm gonna go back through my series of saws and get rid of the the clutch drums. That's one thing I'm gonna do. And I think I'm gonna set these up on a lathe 
and explore taking some material off the flywheels for two reasons. One for weight and the other is, is uh, it's easier for me to take a little bit off of this than it is for me to try to modify the pull starts. But of course as soon as you get that thing fired up it does its own modification now doesn't it? So what's going to happen next is um, this saw and the absolute as it comes out of the box saw build I'm going to go bring them up get them fired up tuned up a little bit and take some test cuts and see if we can see a difference between them so that's what's happening next Well, I set that to 13, I'm sorry, I set that to 12, I don't know, like 12.6. This saw hasn't broken in, and it's running okay. I find they run a lot better after a little bit of break-in time. But it's a winter day, and I've got this ash down, so I've got a little saw work to do anyway. We're going to give it a little bit of of runtime on this stuff here first and then uh, try the other saw. This one it just likes to stall. One thing I like about these darn things is that uh, inboard clutch. I know there's people who go crazy about the angle, the dangle, and all that kind of crap about how how a uh, saw handles. But doing an operation like this, where I've got to switch bars around and things like that, having that uh, internal clutch is, I think, quite a convenience. All right, this saw has literally never ever been fired before. I have no idea what it's going to do. So this will be an idea of what happens the first time you put gasoline in one of these things. And remember this one here is the one that has uh, a slight muffler mod and that cleaned up intake. I know it, it's going to freaking kick back and hurt me. I know it. Oh yeah. And that funny noise it's going to have because of the interference on the pull start in the, in the uh, flywheel.
Let's go bring them to the test log and make some test cuts. All right, the test log. It's a winter day out, no doubt. It's pretty chilly. I'd say it's about uh, 20 degrees. Now, I had hit a tap in that, so I'm going to cut a chunk off, get rid of that X for danger, and try to get a couple of cuts in first with a mildly modified saw, which clearly is running better. But I'm not sure it's because of my modifications. I think it's simply a carburetor. Um, I don't think it's going to make a difference in raw power, but I do remember using that very same carburetor on my uh, big bore, you know, the first time I put that together. And I had similar problems. I blamed it on the big bore cylinder, but I'm beginning to think now it might be that carburetor. So let's get right to it, make some cuts, make some noise. Make some That speaks for itself. That's no joke saw right there. And for those people who are not used to Northeast, this is about as hard a maple log as you're ever going to see. It's frozen hard. So being able to cut through it like that, that's pretty impressive. And I think to those who pay attention, when I just lean on it, when I was just trying to push it, I couldn't make it cut that fast. I actually had to wedge in those bucking spikes and push, and it didn't even slow down. And this is before breaking. That there is a no joke saw. I like it. So we'll see if the other one uh, with its carburetor issue is close. I'm not sure it's going to be like that. All right, let's uh, take this one here with a slightly suspect carb. Um, it's actually tuned, oh, at about 12.6, while the other one's tuned at about 12.495. Um, not sure that's going to make a difference. I'm doing that because neither one of them are really broken in yet. Both of them could be leaned out some.
about to debug that one. I think it's a carburetor. I really don't think that made much difference in the way it ran. But that right now is not a successful build. But it may be representative of, you know, a little bit of inconsistency in things like the carburetor and possibly the ignition. You know, other than that, it runs good. I can tell you just from feel, uh, it felt like it cut almost as fast as the other one. It wasn't that much off. They're about the same. But the other thing I could tell you is, whereas the other one I could really reef on, I could lean right on that saw. That one there, I could stall it out by pushing that same, you know, same amount. So while the cut time might be close, the feel of the saw says the other one has more torque. But uh, I guess we'll bring it up to the uh, video editor and find out. So. A little bit of snow to set the atmosphere. You know, a January day in central New York. Two big saws.